Hello, welcome to this new book, Analysis of Financial Management by Robert Higgins. We're going to start and do chapter by chapter summary with his book club. This is the 10th edition that I'm referring to. So who is the audience for this book? An audience for this book is someone who understands accounting. They already know and they have taken a full-fledged course for three to six months on accounting. They know how to read financial statements. They know how to um, understand where to get them from. They understand basics of accounting. So if you don't know that, then this will be a bouncer, right? Meaning you will not understand it. So better take an accounting one-on-one -on -one course before you get into this. So in chapter one, so we talked about who is an audience. An audience is someone who understands accounting. And why should we learn this? Why should we understand how to analyze a financial statement? We can learn how to read financial statement and make sense out of it through accounting, but there's so much that goes into it in terms of forensics, in terms of understanding how is the company actually using the money, generating the money, and so many things like that. And we can find all of those answers if we can understand advanced techniques of accounting. So this is important as uh, leaders uh, of the company, you wanna understand where, where the problem lies in terms of uh, where the money is used, where the problem lies in terms of its usage efficiently. So you need to understand how, to, how the company is doing based on its account. So chapter one is, is, is a recap of accounting 101. So it's, it's a, it's basically talking about cash flows, cash flow statement, balance sheet, income statement, and and um, shareholders equity and the limitations of accounting, right? And we've seen all of this um, in accounting 101. And it introduces a new concept called sources and use statement, which I didn't learn in accounting, but that's a new thing for if you're not what we might not have learned in accounting that it introduces to us. So let's get into the basics of what it has covered as a recap. So this whole chapter is a recap of of course. So um, cash flow cycle, we know what a cash flow is, right? It describes the movement, cash flow is movement of money or cash in and out of the bank of the company. And we know profit is not equal to cash flow and both are important and just having positive profits is not good. You need to have a positive cash flow. And so we've learned all of that in accounting. So to quickly recap, that is important to understand why profits is not equals cash flow and why profits is not sufficient to be a healthy company. If you don't understand this, it's highly recommended to understand and recap some of the concepts of accounting. Balance sheet. We know it's a point in time snapshot of what the company owes and what the company owns, right? So what it owes and what it owns, right? And we have this fundamental equation of assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. You need to understand how they balance all the time. And uh, current assets and current liabilities are things that mature in less than a year. And equity is on the liability side of the equation. And that means that the shareholders who have put in uh, money through equity, they've already spent that money. So it's a claim that they have on existing assets. So that's equity, right? Equity is a claim on existing assets that the shareholders have. So that's recapping balance sheet. Then income statement. Income statement has revenues or sales and expenses, cost of goods. And the net income is basically revenue minus expenses and everything, taxes, others you get net income which helps improve your owner's equity. The company is doing well, the owner's claim gets bigger and bigger, right? Through their equity. We know about the accrual uh, accounting principle where when a company sells something, doesn't mean that they have cash that are received from the customer. It's the revenue is recognized when the sale is done. That's accrual accounting and same for expenses but it's not when the cash is received. So that's an important distinction to remember. Depreciation, 
uh, is the expenditure of usage of assets, right? Like if there's wear and tear of assets and amortization, right? So all of these concepts that I just said it in like few seconds and in the last five minutes are deep concepts in accounting. So if this is not very clear, don't uh, move forward. It's highly recommended to do an accounting one-on-one -on -one course. So the new thing introduced in this for me was the sources and uses statement. I didn't learn this in my accounting class, but that's a really interesting one. So let's understand what is a sources and uses statement. And we can build a sources and uses statement from the balance sheet. And so what is, so it, it comes with this simple, um, simple rule. There's only two ways in which a company can generate cash, and there's only two ways in which it can use the cash that it generates, right? So for any entity, any company, you wanna find out how is it getting the cash and how it's using the cash. So that is sources of cash, getting the cash, using the cash, usage of cash, right? So once you understand this, you'll quickly understand, hey, is it is it getting more cash or is it using more cash or what? where is it coming from? So what are those two sources? So the source of cash can come from two places. If you re reduce your asset accounts, let's say you have cash in your bank, and if you reduce that cash balance, you use it, right? So that's the source. You're using that from the bank. So that's the source of your asset. And you're reducing that asset. Then you can use that as a source. You have a source, meaning you can get that money from there. Source is basically saying, I can get the money from there. Liability. Uh, if you borrow money from the banks, if you increase your liability, you have a source. You can get money that way. So these are two ways in which you can get the money or get have a source for cash. And opposite, right? Which is if you increase your asset accounts, you can have your your uh, business making a lot of money and you can put it in the bank. And so when you increase your asset account, you're using that money. Or you're paying down your debt, then you are reducing your liability. Then that's the use of cash. So once we understand source and use, then we can quickly look at the balance sheet and generate the sources and uses statement. So let's let's get into it straight away. So I have this example from the book. So if you look at this 2009 and 2010, you will see a snapshot and you can quickly create this last column called change in account. When you calculate this change in account, you will quickly know, hey, what was the change? Once you know this last column, which is the change in account, you can create another table Remembering those two formulas, if you reduce your asset, increase your liability, that's a source of cash, right? And so then look at each of these rows here, each of these rows, and then they're under either assets or liability. If they are assets and liability, if they're increasing or decreasing, you can, you can mark them here. So anything that's in brackets is decreasing. Anything that's not in brackets, increasing. So if it's an increasing asset account, Remember this this piece, increase in asset account is a use of cash. Decreasing asset account is a source of cash, right? So very quickly, you can then categorize this last column, each of these entries into the sources and uses. So once you have the sources and uses, you can find out like, hey, from the balance sheet, I can now understand very quickly that, hey, uh, this company is, uh, is getting um, it's using its cash uh, to pay down uh, the long-term debt. It's using that money to reduce the liability uh, and it's increasing the shareholders' equity, right? So you can quickly find out like where is the money coming from? This is the sources and when it, where is it going, right? Um, so that is an important way to find out very quickly what's happening with this company, right? So decrease in asset, increase in liability is where you get the money, sources, and use is the opposite, right? So that was a really good one. Uh, and finally to end, right, uh, this this fifth part, which is there are lots of limitation of accounting, which makes it very hard to say, hey, if, if the balance sheet says this is the value of the assets, total asset, that means the company is valued that much. No, it's not the case, because remember, there are many limitations which we've learned in accounting, and to quickly recap, there are five or six. Accounting is backward looking, meaning it notes older transactions, it, but the valuation or is forward looking, which is like, hey, what is the value of the company going forward? What it can generate in the future? And it, remember, there's also this accrual accounting piece when 
when the, the sale uh, happens, uh, it's noted, but the cash might not have re received in the bank account. So realized versus unrealized income, right? Uh, profit's not equal to cash flow, and profit doesn't mean it's financially healthy company. Um, historical valuation of, let's say you buy um, a property, then the valuation is fixed at the history, historical period, not at the current valuation. So the book value is always most likely uh, lower than the market value. And then every company can do depreciation in a different way. So someone can do a straight line depreciation, someone can do an accelerated depreciation. And so you can't really compare one company asset with the other if they use different depreciations. There may be different value associated with it. And to make it even more you know, complicated, there are two types of accounts. We, we look at on the SEC website, all the compliance uh, accounts that are filed by the company to find out like how is this financial health of the company. But there's a separate account for taxes, which is the main goal of that is to minimize taxes. And finally, like when a shareholder buys equity, there's a cost associated with it, right? If I put $10 and buy Apple stock, then I'm giving up, it's, there's a cost associated towards that, right? Meaning Apple needs to at least generate money more than the cost of capital that it, that it uh, causes me to have that money, meaning I could put that $10 in a bank account and get interest. So that's my cost of capital, right? Meaning I can at least get that much. So when I'm using that $10 and putting it in Apple, I'm transferring that responsibility that the bank gives me to Apple, meaning Apple now has to generate that much money. So cost of equity, meaning equity owners who own the company, they don't, there's no line in that says, hey, we need to pay this much money to the equity owners. So there's so many such downsides in which you can't really use accounting for uh, finding out valuation as simply as uh, as it looks. So when you know all of these areas, you can you can understand how to analyze these statements better to get insights better. That's the whole co reason that this course is useful. And remember, accountants. Uh, I like this line from this this chapter, which says accountants prefer to be precisely wrong right because they use this historical valuation and um, there's no cost of equity versus ambiguously right meaning they, they prefer precise wrong versus ambiguously right and that's that's like confident i'm 100 percent wrong versus i'm 99 percent sure right so that was a good learning as well so we learned about sources and uses that's the biggest new concept to use you can quickly do it for finding out where is the company generating the money and where is it using the money sources uses when you do that a lot of insights come out um, and finally the the last concept to close this this chapter is the cash flow uh, and there are different terms used cash flow uh, net cash flow cash flow from operations, free cash flow, discounted cash flow, right? So they're all related. But in a sense, cash flow is movement of money. We covered that in the very beginning of this video, movement of money in and out of the cash account, which is the bank account, right? Um, and so how is this cash generated? It's through the net income. When, when, the, when the company efficiently produces something, it generates income. Uh, and when you add to that non-cash items like depreciation, and other amortization and other pieces, you get the net cash flow. So net income plus the non-cash items is the net cash flow or the cash earnings. Um, to that, if you add the changes in assets and liability to generate this cash, meaning you used your assets, there's a wear and tear, there is some money used in working capital, there's money gone in terms of salaries and others and account receivables might have gone up, payables might have gone up. So there's changes in assets and liability. When you add to the net cash flow changes in assets and liability, you get cash flow from operations, right? And and that will be a true representative, like, hey, your business, when you had to generate X dollars, it actually used up some money to generate that. So cash flow from operation, operating activities is even better than net cash flow. But then you have to, uh, from that, uh, generate the free cash flow. The way you do that is, Every company, if it generates $10, uh, 
it will reinvest some part of that money into the company back again for future growth, like capital expenditure. So if you reduce that capital expenditures and remove all of those expenses that are used for capitalizing the future growth from the cash flow from operations, you get free cash flow. So this is like truly like what you're looking for in terms of assessing the profitability of the company. Like what is the free cash flow? How much is the free cash flow? Uh, and then there's this, this ratio called free cash flow yield or cash flow yield, which is like how much is it actually net net generating? Meaning, um, add in the non-cash items, add in the changes in assets and liability, add in the reinvested capital. And after that, how much is it generating? So that is free cash flow. And discounted cash flow is, is again, like there'll be free cash flows over a period of time. And so you can do um, present value of those cash flows to, to find out like, hey, what is this company worth? Right, so that is, that is a time value of money that we've learned in accounting as well. Uh, so that's discounted cash flow. Again, I went through in 15 minutes, uh, chapter one summary, introduce one new concept, uses and caches, uses, sources and uses of cash flow. Um, a source and use of cash, that's the biggest, most useful concept, but we pretty much revised accounting and in a pretty like super fast way. Highly encourage you to do accounting first and then get into this series and it'll be even more useful, valuable and um, enlightening. Thanks. See you in the next video.